With the introduction of the S600 series of combines, John Deere included the option to have a 2630 display mounted on your armrest as your means of controlling your combine. With this 2630 display, you are able to have multiple home screens just like in the past that you can customize to show you what you like. I'm going to show you how to use this 2630 display to set up your combine to operate properly for you in different crops. You have the option of creating home screen similar to this one that would have all of your combine functions on your main screen. You can also set it up that it's only in a partial screen such as this. If this is your preference, you're still able to access all combine functions through your display by using your menu button in the bottom right hand corner and navigating to your combine section. Within this page, you'll have information for what your moisture is and your yield is on an average basis when you are not actively combining and on an instant basis when you are actively combining. Below this, you will see what your combine is set to for a crop and what your main settings in your combine are set to. In the bottom left corner, you will have a reading for what your hopper level is. So when you hit three quarters full or full, this will flash and show you that. And you also have an indicator if your unloading auger is engaged or not. Towards the right side, we have our recording indicator button that shows us whether or not we are actively recording information. Along the right hand side, we have options for getting into our extra settings. So this is our combine main page that we are on now. This is found under button F. If we go to button G, we get into our combine harvesting information. This gives us a breakdown of some basic information and has extra menus within it for different things such as field totals and crop totals. So that we can break down how we're doing on the individual field and how we're doing on the crop as a whole. To navigate back to your main, come back to your combine button. Then we will go into our setup crop options. You may see one of two different screens here. In this case, we can select what our crop is that we're going into from this screen. Depending on software versions, you may not be able to do it from here. You may have to do it through your documentation settings. And this page will look different for you in that case. If your page looks the same as this, you can see that we select our crop by opening up our menu and selecting whichever crop we are harvesting. And then we tell the combine what the conditions are like so that it can give us recommendations on how to set your combine based on that crop condition. You also see that our vision track settings are done here for how sensitive the vision track sensors are depending on your crop size. When I switch from a crop such as canola to one that, such as chickpeas, which is a much larger seed, you'll see that our sensitivity changes considerably based on that. This is also where you would come to calibrate your vision track system once you've done a drop pan test and know what your grain losses are. Again, once we're in this page, you can see that we have some submenus available to us that were not pre previously shown. Starting at the top, we have our grain tank level set up. From here, we can tell the combine when we say the grain tank is full and when we say it is empty so that it gives us a more accurate reading as we go along. We can indicate to it that we want it to tell us we're full sooner than the combine does normally so your operator will unload the combine sooner. We also have an option to go into our folding functions. So if we have a folding unloading auger like we show here, this is the option where it'll show that. It also is where we would go for our power fold hoppers. And we would have a different screen showing that would show us our hoppers. Also in here, we can get to our residue management positions. If we have a standard tailboard, this page will show us if our chopper is raised or lowered only. If we have a power cast tailboard, then we can do some extra settings for our speeds of our spinners from here. Our moisture setup is done through this page. From here, we can have things such as alarms set up where the combine will warn us if our moisture gets outside of a certain range that we can preset here. We also tell the combine if we want our moisture sensor to give us a correction reading based on what we're seeing. This is used where if we have a moisture sensor that we trust either on farm or at a grain elevator that is telling us a different moisture reading than we are seeing on the combine 
we can put that correction number in here. For example, if the moisture sensor that you trust is telling you that the crop is sampling at 10% moisture and the combine is showing you that you are at 12% moisture, then we would put in a value of negative two here and now your combine will show you 10% instead of 12%. With this, it is important to do the calibration for your moisture correction prior to putting any sort of a value in here, which is done in a different page that I'll show you after. The fixed moisture option is used for high moisture corn and will not be used in our area. The last submenu in this area is for automatic settings. So with this, when we select our crop under the G button and we tell it our threshing conditions, when we come to our H button, there is going to be preset default set points that Deere recommends this as a starting point for your combine. These are the numbers that show up on this page in blue. If you want to use these settings, then you'll need to engage your separator and then select the accept button in the bottom left corner and then your combine will automatically change all settings to match these set points. You can see that there's also recommendations for the crop for settings that cannot be changed automatically by the combine, such as feeder house drum position, concave types, and chopper speeds. From this page, we can also choose to create our own. So after you have optimized your combine for the crop settings, you can select the new, type in whatever settings you want for your set points, and then hit accept, and it will give you the option to name this profile. And then in the following year, when you come back in and go to that crop again, you will have that option as well as the default option from Deer and a clean out option for at the end of crop where it'll open up everything and speed things to their maximum setting so that it can clean out the combine as well as possible without actually getting into the combine. From our main page, we can also go to our header settings. This page will show differently depending on what header you have hooked onto your combine, but it'll always give information related to that style of header. The important option here is button H which takes you into your automatic header modes. For Hydroflex headers, we recommend that you select all options except for header float, which is this one here. On a header float option, our Hydroflex system is not working properly for us and it will cause excess wear on your header. Instead, we wanna make sure that we're using our feeder house automatic options and our header automatic options so that we use our sensors within our header to set our heights. If you have any questions about this, please contact the Customer Support Center. The other two options from the Combine main page are engine information, which will give us our engine and separator hours, as well as our engine usage chart, which also shows on our corner post display. And we can get into our calibration functions. From this page, we can open up our menu and get into all of our user calibrations. So this will be things such as your header calibrations, your shoe and sieve calibrations, your feeder house raise speed and tilt range calibrations, and a number of other calibrations depending on what your combine is equipped with. Ones that we strongly recommend that you do are your feeder house raise speed, tilt range, and header calibrations when you connect your header for the first time in a year a mass flow vibration calibration at the start of every field to make your yield information more accurate, a moisture sensor temperature calibration to make your moisture sensor more accurate. This is one that can be adjusted on a daily basis and takes a very short time frame to do. I'll show you it in a minute. And your yield calibrations are also important to get accurate information. For moisture sensor temperature, 
all we are doing is telling the combine the temperature of the grain. When you take your grain sample to your trusted moisture sensor, you are needing to measure the temperature of that grain so that you're able to get an accurate reading of the moisture of the grain. When you are doing this, take that temperature reading and put it into your combine with this calibration and it will make your onboard moisture sensor more accurate as a result. Again, we have an offset option. If it is showing 77 degrees Fahrenheit on the combine, but your testing at the trusted moisture sensor shows you that it's only 72 degrees, we can put in an offset number to take it down to that 72 degrees and from there our moisture sensor reading on our combine will be more accurate.